Today we're over at Glenn's house and we're removing these eight large pots, which was his garden, and we're taking the same space and we're putting in an 18 inch wide grow box. So we cleared the area. His son John is doing a good job in getting rid of the grass in the area. They're going to lay a border of three and a half feet out here of just plain dirt. They're going to cut this grass out here later on in the week. So right now we're removing all the grass, the roots, everything from the garden area that we're going to frame it in. We anticipate this will give Glenn a four times the production from the same area. We ran our first line and we put our stakes in just as outlined in the book. Now we're going to put down our first 2x8 and set up the backboard. Okay, we've got the box in and the T-frame. Because this is so close to the house, we had to do a couple things. Typically the T-frame in this situation would be all the way to the back, but in order to have room here to have access to the 2x4 so we can wrap the vertical twine around it, this had to be forward. So we brought it as far forward as we had to. We also put these corner supports in because we couldn't screw from the back. We took some extra soil that, was, that we had taken out and put it back in to bring the level even all the way across the bottom of the 2x8s so it'll take less sand and sawdust to fill that in. Okay, we're back filling in the box with sand and sawdust. We bought our sawdust in bags from a mill. This has, you can see, very small pieces of sawdust in here. Some very small and maybe a little bit larger over here. But as we till it all together, it mixes up just beautifully. We pay about $3.50 for one of these bags. For this entire box, it took about three and a half bags. This is an 18 inch wide by 20 foot long box. We're mixing that with the tiller. At least I was until I broke it, hit it against the wall of the house. So we'll be able to get that repaired and tuned up. Needed to tune up anyway. Look at the bright side. Okay, we have this all filled in. We've turned it several times just to make sure everything's mixed well. And you can see I'm leveling it here. I just have a scrap piece of two by two and I'm pulling dirt from in front of it, putting it in front of the two by two and then going across and making sure it's level. But as you can see, it looks great. You'll see little clumps of dirt down here. That to me means I'm getting this all the way down eight inches deep as I'm mixing it with the shovel and with the tiller. I want to make sure I mix all the sand and sawdust together. You can see it's a very consistent mix. What we're using here is called torpedo sand in Houston. I don't know why it's called torpedo sand, but it's basically unwashed concrete sand. It has little pieces of gravel in it, as you can see here, and it works perfectly fine. Great product. Cost us $20 for half a yard of torpedo sand. It took about a quarter of the yard of sand that we bought to fill this four foot long, 18 inch wide grow box. The rest of it we used in a walkway here on the side. They made about a 24 inch wide walkway and removed all the grass and the roots and put down sand as a buffer area to keep the weeds and the bugs out. That'll be walked on and that'll get nice and compact to be very easy to weed. As you can see, I put down one ounce of pre-plant fertilizer per linear foot. And now I'm going to be putting down half an ounce of weekly feed. And what we did is we just took a, a soup can here or bean can, weighed it on the scale, marked it with a marker, and I just wrote 10 ounces on there so they remember. And so now they don't ever have to weigh their weekly feed. They just can come over to the bucket, scoop it up into the can, and then sprinkle it down the watering row once a week. And that's what we're going to do right now. Then we're going to mix this all in. Now that we have the right amount inside the box of everything, and then we'll level it off again and get ready to install the automatic watering system. We set up an automatic watering system using his existing gardening hose that he had running to the back of the house. What we did is we picked up an automatic watering timer which is very handy. I'll have a link below this video for this timer. It's inexpensive and works great. You don't need anything expensive. We added it to an existing Y on his outlet here. 
we have this faucet turned on all the time. This will come on for one minute a day, probably about six o'clock in the morning, and he'll watch his plants to see if he needs to have it longer or maybe twice a day. So we have that running down the hose to his backyard. Let's take a look. Here we connected the hose that we ran from the front of the house to a hose and PVC connector. Here we glued it to a three quarter inch schedule 40 pipe. Probably what would even be better is if this was threaded. In case it gets broken, it can be replaced instead of having to replace this whole thing. I'll come back and put some straps on here to hold this in place. We've got our ball valve here and now we're ready to go ahead and test the automatic watering system. We have it all connected. He pre-drilled the holes. We've got a male-female connection here so if we need to it's easy to store by taking it apart or to adjust in case the holes aren't exactly lined up. And here on the end we have a threaded end cap which is off right now because we're going to flush the system first get all the debris out and then we'll go ahead and put the threaded cap on. Because you may want to remove this wire from time to time when you're tilling, I left a tag end here on each end so it's easy to unwind and put back. Typically this board would be to the back of the grow bed but because we're right against the house we couldn't do it that way. So generally you would have this all the way to the back and you put that nail right on here and that's where you would plant your plants. Right now we're testing the watering system. This allows us to turn it a little bit, make sure that the center one is pointing down. Here he got off a little bit on his holes. Oh, he got off quite a bit on his holes. So in this case what we're going to probably have to do is cut the pipe right here, put a male and female connector on it in order to adjust the holes because these are really off. He's almost squirting straight down when they should be squirting over like this. So that's an easy fix. Just cut it, put a connection on there, and we're good. Down here, because this is a male-female connection, we can simply twist this pipe back and forth and get it lined up. This all looks really good here. Oh, this happened, same thing again here. We're shooting out of the box. We'll have to put another connection here and be able to adjust it. With this ball valve here, we can adjust how much pressure is coming out of these pipes. You can hear the difference. Yes, I think. And so if you're getting too much pressure drilling holes, just turn your ball valve here and adjust. This actually looks fine the way it is, open all the way. We get our connections and cut the pipe here. Now we're able to line up all the holes underneath so everything squirts down properly. We picked up some plants and transplanted some plants from his earlier garden, which I'll show you here in a second. And some of these will make it, some of them won't. They were pretty bad condition when we moved them in here, like these peas here. Anyway, so we'll see what happens. And then here are some that we picked up. Not really happy with these plants, but wanted to get something in the garden here. He went from a garden that had buckets filled with garden soil mix to a beautiful mid-ladder garden with vertical posts, custom-made soil out of sand and sawdust for about the same cost. He's had two neighbors come over so far today, just happened to drop by, and they're very impressed with how nice the garden looks. I'll come back in a week or so and see how the plants are doing, but we put the plants in and we gave them nitrogen and then we watered it in so we've done everything we can. You can see that the walkway here is below the edge of the 2x8 so we know when we have enough water because we can see the water coming out from underneath the 2x8. So this project is done. Very pleased with it. Hope this has helped you learn how much you need of sand and sawdust for a box this long and that you can plant right up against the house. You just have to kind of adjust a little bit and make it work. Whatever you need to do Figure out how it'll work for you so you can learn how to plant and grow your own food. There's nothing that tastes better than homegrown food. This is LDS Prepper reminding you, if you are prepared, you shall not fear. And if you take the time to read the Midlatter Garden Course book, pick up the micronutrients, and put in a garden, 
I promise you, you'll have great rewards by following the Mitt Ladder recipe.